Thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, thank you, uh, moderator. Yes, my name is uh, Itai, and uh, I'm coming from Zimbabwe in Southern Africa. Uh, Zimbabwe is one country that did exceptionally well in the first 10 years of independence. Uh, mainly because of uh, very strong community level structures that we had. And uh, because of those very strong community level structures, we also had a very excellent you know, family planning program. And uh, we managed to also get very good health outcome indicators. Unfortunately, most of those gains of the first 10 years of independence have now been eroded because of a number of factors. Uh, I also tend to blame civil society because the first 10 years of independence, most of us, we were so excited about attaining independence. And then, these were our heroes, you know, who were in charge. And civil society took a back seat. And as a result, I'm sure most of you are aware that this is a country that then recorded one of the highest, you know, cholera cases in 2008, 2009, whereby almost 4,000 Zimbabweans died from a preventable illness uh, like cholera. 100,000 Zimbabweans were affected and infected with cholera. As I speak now, this is a region that also has one of the highest HIV prevalence rate. Uh, in Zimbabwe, where I'm coming from, almost 1.3 million Zimbabweans are living with HIV. Of those 1.3 million, about 60% uh, are lucky enough uh, to be on treatment. The economy has been on a meltdown uh, since 2000, uh, which leaves almost about 85% of the population uh, in our unemployment rate. Women and girls are some of the most affected. So when we look at uh, sexual reproductive health rights, uh, it then impacts very negatively on our women and girls. In terms of uh, the challenges that are faced by students and youths, by the way, we have got a number of definitions for the youths. We have got a political youth, uh, who can be as young as 60 something years. And then we have the standard youth uh, who is up to 35 years old. Generally, there's so much knowledge in terms of condoms. But if you look on the ground in terms of uh, the uptake, in terms of action, it is still very low. Uh, the last few years have uh, recorded some of the highest, you know, condoms ever distributed in the country. But if you also look at the prevalence rate, it, it tells a totally different story. Uh, why is it given that so much condoms are being taken in tertiary institutions, but the HIV prevalence rate uh, remains quite high. We had a great opportunity in 2009 when the country was in the process of formulating a new constitution. And as civil society, we took the lead in terms of advocating for the inclusion of the right to health in the new Zimbabwe constitution. And I can proudly say we now have the right to health embedded in the new Zimbabwe constitution. Zimbabwe has also signed quite a number 
of other international agreements. But in terms of the actual implementation, you then find that we are yet to realize the right to health, even though we have it in the Constitution. Our biggest challenge has been lack of implementation of existing laws. And also, if you look at the right to health in the Constitution, we are also yet to harmonize the existing public health policies in terms of relating to the new constitution that now recognize the right to health. We have the Zimbabwe National Family Planning Council, uh, which employs quite a number of uh, community family planning distributors. Uh, unfortunately, the numbers have also been going down, mainly because of uh, lack of incentives. Uh, if you compare Zimbabwe to a country like Rwanda, Rwanda is almost uh, the same size with Zimbabwe. But in Rwanda, they've got like 60,000 village health workers on the ground. And these are village health workers or community health workers that are incentivized, that are motivated. But in Zimbabwe, we have less than 9,000 village health workers on the ground. And uh, mostly, if you look at the health budget, we sometimes even forget to budget for this cadre. So there are no incentives, there are no allowances to motivate the village health workers. Some of them, we cannot even call them village health workers because they cover more than five villages. Some of them even cycling very long distances uh, in order to cover their catchment area. So the challenges that are faced uh, include, you know, issues to do with the distance in accessing family planning services, especially for the youths in rural areas. Uh, the cost of uh, family planning is also quite high because you need at least about a dollar a month to get the full month, you know, uh, if it is for the long-term family planning, you know, uh, methods. And this is in a country where the majority of the people are living below the poverty datum line, and some of them do not even have access to the, to the dollar. By the way, the, Zimb the Zimbabwean economy uh, dollarized in 2009, meaning that we are now using the hard currency. We no longer have our own currency. And, and uh, the hard currency is not easy uh, to come by. So because of the high cost of uh, the family planning tablets, we have seen a new trend in the last few years where people are now buying you know, the family planning products from the black market. Uh, unfortunately, when you buy from that market, you don't then get uh, enough information and education. And uh, there is also a tendency you know, uh, to abuse uh, the morning after pill, and this is mainly common, mainly in tertiary institutions. The cost of sanitary products and the alternatives that are being used. Sanitary way is generally available, mostly in urban areas, but like I noted earlier on, the biggest challenge is the cost in rural areas and resettlement areas, uh, availability is a challenge mainly because of the distances uh, to the shops. And what are the alternatives that uh, women and girls are using? Uh, it's shocking to see some of the unhealthy means that women are using, uh, such as cow dung, uh, leaves, uh, some even repeatedly use the same clothes, uh, but this is also in a country where we are facing challenges in terms of access to clean, safe drinking water. Uh, it also becomes a challenge even to make sure that the, the pads uh, get washed regularly. Uh, what as civil society organizations have been doing is to make sure that young people 
they also get involved and also give their views and input in terms of uh, their health challenges. Ch child marriages are still one of the biggest challenges that we face in Zimbabwe. Despite having national laws, including some of the international agreements, uh, the legal age for sexual consent is 16 years, but the legal age for majority is 18 years. So this has tended to create challenges in terms of implementation of or enforcement of the existing laws. And we still have some traditional leaders who continue to promote uh, child marriages. But what is important is the role of the different players in terms of uh, advocating against the uh, child marriages. Uh, one of the barriers that we face as Zimbabwe is the issue of uh, maternity fees. Yes, we have seen a decline of uh, maternal mortality rate from as high as 960 deaths per 100,000 live births. Uh, at the moment, the official figure is 525 per 100,000 uh, births. And, and this is still unacceptably high because it translates into an average of eight mothers dying every day. But as Zimbabwe, we also greatly appreciate the support that we have received uh, from the different international partners. We have come together and pulled resources into a basket fund called the Health Transition Fund uh, in an effort to remove user fees. So you'd find that most rural health centers now are no longer charging fees because of the resources that we are getting from the Health Transition Fund and the results-based financing. But there is still a challenge in major urban areas where health centers are still charging fees up to 25 US dollars. And that has resulted in mothers, you know, going back to their villages to deliver in their rural homes because rural health centers do not charge fees. But we still have up to a third of our mothers that are delivering at home because of uh, uh, barriers such as uh, 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 user fees. In terms of domestic health financing, uh, our health budget uh, is still very inadequate in terms of uh, addressing the health needs. Uh, previously, the health budget used to come second after the Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education but if you look at 2015, the health budget was relegated to number five, uh, which gives us a paltry 6.3%. Uh, African governments in 2001 uh, in Abuja made a commitment to allocate at least 15% of their total uh, budgets uh, to health. Unfortunately, most of our African countries, Zimbabwe included, have been failing uh, to meet uh, that Abuja uh, commitment. Uh, Youth-friendly services is also one of the biggest challenges that we faced. Uh, I'm sure you also saw that picture of the village health workers. Majority of them are very old women, which makes it very difficult for young girls uh, to access uh, that service. Uh, if you look at the female condom, the way it was designed, uh, it's very difficult for young girls uh, uh, to use it. And generally, what we have also seen is negotiating for condom use uh, is a big challenge, and, 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 and it's one of the threats that we continue to face. In conclusion, I only have a minute. Uh, what we need to do in most African countries uh, is to translate policies into action. We have very good policies in place,
but in most cases those policies are not fully uh, implemented. We need to improve on resource allocation, especially to sexual reproductive health services. We also need to ensure the provision of youth-friendly services, removal of barriers to access to services such as user fees, and we also need to empower and capacitate uh, our youths especially the young women and girls, to make informed decisions about their sexual reproductive health. Uh, Zimbabwe is still a very beautiful country, despite the challenges that we face, and we hope it is possible to turn it around and, and, and get back to the levels of the first 10 years of independence, where we were the envy of the region in terms of uh, addressing sexual reproductive health rights. I thank you. Do we do you have any comments or clarifications here? Yeah. Great. Thank you for a very good presentation. My name is Guru and I come from Save the Children in Norway. And I've had the privilege to work with Save the Children in Zimbabwe, who work with the Community Working Group on Health. You're our most important partner. So I wonder if you could say a little bit more about how you work with local communities at the very in the community itself, because I know that you have some really great works, ways of working with the communities to increase their participation in demanding their health services. Thanks. Oh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, I deliberately avoided talking about our work <laughs> so that I could not use this platform to advertise uh, the organization where I'm coming from. Like she noted, you know, Community Working Group on Health is a partnership uh, with Save the Children. In terms of uh, strengthening voice and accountability in maternal neonatal child health, and, and what we have been doing is at community level, we have uh, been looking at governance in health, strengthening the health center committees. Uh, these are at health center level. Uh, some of the committees previously were just being put in place without proper training. And, and ourselves and, and serve the children have come in to capacitate those committees and strengthen the demand side, the monitoring side, and also the link between the health center and the community in terms of information flow. But we have also, through that program, been carrying out health literacy programs within those communities in making sure that communities are well informed about their health rights and also their responsibilities, in making sure that when communities participate in, in, in health issues, they are participating from a knowledgeable and an informed uh, position. And this program or the project that we are implementing in partnership with, with, with Save the Children has come in a big way in terms of also making sure that the resources that are being allocated to the health centers are also used for their purpose and to benefit the communities. So this is the project that we are currently operating with, 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 with Save the Children. And it's across the country in almost 40 or so districts. And, and it's an effort towards the, also supporting the Ministry of Health uh, because community participation is one of the key components of primary health care. And, and what we have seen is in districts where we have 
strong health center committees, these governance structures. Resources are better managed. Uh, relationships between the health workers and the community uh, also greatly improves. We have seen communities taking ownership, you know, in terms of their health facilities, protecting, you know, resources that are allocated uh, to their health centers. Yeah, that's in brief.